four inch shad impact by Kitek on a core tackle hover rig. Basically turn this into a lipless crankbait. Pretty good tail kick for a straight tail bait. All because of the jig head. Large mouth. Oh, come on. Wanted that hover rig. Two pounder, maybe. On the old hover rig, we are practicing right now for uh, our next event on Clarks Hill Lake. And <clears throat> we're trying to find a morning spot for some of these spotted bass to try to catch a few decent ones in the uh, morning before going and looking for largemouth. So I'm just running some of these, oh dang it, some of these secondary points. And then uh, the fish are having a very hard time resisting the hover rig right now, guys. I uh, have been out for just a few minutes. I caught three. So I've decided I put the camera on to see if I could film a quick video for you guys. Show you how I like to fish it. In this case, we've got a lot of uh, herring that are in this lake they're getting pushed back into a lot of these pockets and uh, the spotted bass seem to be setting up on some of these secondary points i like the ones with a little bit of clay a little bit of rock just like this one and uh, i'm just throwing the hover rig i'm throwing it with a four inch kitek shad impact it looks so good in the water i'd show you I'd show you, you can't really see it because the water is kind of dirty, but the bait is just, it just glides and falls so erratically. And I think the fish really haven't seen anything like it. I know my roommates are using it uh, with a pile of success as well. They're throwing a uh, fluke on it and the fish are just eating it up really good. The thing I'm not sure about here with this lake specifically is whether or not the spotted bass are worth my time. I, uh, this is day two of practice. I fished for largemouth almost all day yesterday. I can't say I did all that good. I had one decent fish, uh, three pound class fish, and I shook off a bunch of fish and caught a bunch that were little. So my plan coming here was to fish for uh, spotted bass first thing in the morning like this when they're active, hopefully try to catch a few of decent ones that we like to call riders, meaning they're coming to the weigh-in with us. So you're looking, I think we're looking for like two and a half pound class fish at Clarks Hill. And if you can come and catch a couple of decent fish in the first hour or so, that sets you up pretty good for the rest of the day where you just need to go catch a, a handful of decent large mouth. So that's what we're doing right now. And uh, we're just seeing if we can find an area where there's a bunch of fish. This pocket I'm in right now has got a bunch of spots, but you know, they've been pound and a half to pound and three quarters. That largemouth was the biggest one I've caught so far. And he was probably just under two pounds, I'd say. And it's just, the question is, do we want to spend that amount of time fishing for them if I just need to call them out anyways? 
but the hover rig is working so well in this case you know i am scanning i do have my forward facing i'm looking around but i'm really not fishing fish unless i see it the fish are right now they seem to be up in you know three four foot of water so i'm, I'm more just casting and letting that hover rig just flutter to the bottom i have noticed that i've had several fish take it off of the bottom so i'm either getting them bite on the fall or i'm getting them you know if i'm just letting my bait sit there i know it's on the bottom but i feel them bite it when it's on the bottom which you know is is not uncommon i mean it's an easy meal for a fish if they see a, a dead bait fish laying on the bottom but um you know generally i like to let it go to the bottom give it a couple of pops and one will eat oh eat it just like that couldn't have planned that any better a little spot so i i would almost guarantee you he was sitting on the bottom watching it and then what happens is because of that 90 degree jig hook when i snap it it doesn't come up head first it's it darts to either side it's an extremely erratic thing so when i snapped it there that triggered that fish into biting and it was pretty much textbook the problem is that's the size of the fish that i'm catching and I know Clarks Hill is on the verge of an explosion in big spotted bass, but it's been known as a smaller spotted bass fishery. So I don't know. I don't know if this is worth my time or not, but we're going to keep figure, figuring them out. And I got to tell you, I'm enjoying, I'm having a lot of fun. I mean, we've been filming for a few minutes. I caught a largemouth, missed one caught another one and I'm not I'm not fishing very thoroughly I would just say I'm trying to cover as much water jumping around fishing points and uh, it seems like I'm getting a lot more bites just fishing versus scanning if I'm scanning I haven't really you know I've generated a few bites but it, it seems like it seems like they're up cruising shallower up, up along the bank I mean, like what you can see this, it's so funny. This lake goes from like red clay, kind of bigger chunk rock, sand real quick. And then that's just kind of rubble rock. So I'm sure there's a pattern as to what type of rock they're using. So we're trying to figure that out at the same time. Right now, it seems like the red clay is performing the best. But again, I mean, this is, I haven't done this long. So I can't, I can't make that, that, uh, conclusion quite yet but I did want to show you I mean it's a it is a very slow technique it's not necessarily what I want to be doing to cover water but they're eating it so good and I'm only making one or two casts maybe three casts the size of the point depending on how big the point is in this case this is a little bump out it's not really what I would consider a point so you know I make a couple of casts if there's an active fish up there roaming around they're probably going to see it and then I'm just moving on to the next area, but it's not, I mean, you can work it all the way back to the boat, especially if you think you're around fish. I'm not necessarily looking to do that right now. Like I said, I'm trying to cover water really to find a pocket that has a good population of fish in it. Uh, just because then I can come back and I can really work it a little slower in the, in the tournament if I want. But right now I'm trying to cover water. I do like how this rock transitions into I don't know, it's more of like smaller baseball size rock. That's a little different from what I've seen. <clears throat> but it is a technique. So there's, there's two things too that I like to do with it. One, I like to let it just fall on slack line. That will give you more of your spiraling motion and kind of erratic gliding. If I want it more to glide, <clears throat> I can keep my rod tip up and keep more of a bow in my, or a less of a bow in my line. And what that does is it, it puts pressure on the bait and therefore it prevents it from actually spiraling and gets it just to glide. So there are times where I definitely like that better uh, but generally speaking, I think I, I like to just tend to let the bait do what it wants to do. Sometimes it'll spiral and then it'll go into a glide. It's just almost more erratic from that standpoint. This point coming up looks pretty juicy, guys. So I'm going to keep filming until, until we uh, hit this point. It actually looks like it's a boat launch. I did not notice that coming in. 
think it's a bolt launch. Maybe not. <clears throat> you can see this is a striper boat up here. There's a lot of stripers that are pushing in. <laughs> That's one thing I noticed yesterday when I was fishing more of the drains, what I was catching were stripers. The, the spots appeared to be on the points, which is fine with me. It doesn't really matter either way, I guess, but you just need to figure out where the, the better quality ones are. And they're probably mixed in with those stripers. Another typical Clark's Hill spot of bass, 14 incher. <clears throat> he actually ripped the hover rig, so that's the seventh fish I've caught on it, and that's still technically usable. I can still make that work. I would say I probably can get one or two more fish, which is pretty good considering that's like high-tech bait generally those last for like one fish at a time so one of the best things about the hover rig is that it prolongs your plastics like by several times many multiples that's one of the reasons i really i really just love it because i was able to make tackle last so much longer when using the hover rig i was going through packs of flatworm I, you know i catch 10 fish which was great but i would use a, a whole a whole pack of flatworms on it now i can catch 10 fish on one flatworm we're gonna try a sexy shed for the off-colored water Right, I'm gonna work my way across the bay. This is how you rig it, the hover rig. Start about a quarter inch behind the head. <clears> then <throat> you're just gonna thread it all the way up the worm just like you normally would to the point where you're gonna want that bait to come out. Then you're gonna thread it up onto the weight. Now I've removed the weed guard. So you thread it up to the eye of the hook the best thing to do is put your finger, hold the hook, put your finger here, squeeze the head, and just slide it right up and on, and then push it down onto the tip. There's your hover rig, ready to roll, ready for action. Like I said, this is a four inch shad impact by Kitek. We were throwing the Pro Blue Red. That was the first, first bait I've used, like I said, I mean, I've had I think I caught seven on it, lost one or two. I'm gonna try the, the sexy shad color because this one with this off-colored water might be a little, a little better.
A little better, not what we're looking for. Feels a little better. Not much. Oh. Getting chunky. Well guys, I don't know if that's gonna be the answer here for the spotted bass, but I can tell you, if you live at Lake Lanier or Clark's uh, or uh, Lewis Smith, or one of these really classic spotted bass fisheries out in California, someplace like that, I really think you need to pick up some of the core tackle hover rig hooks. It's a, uh, Man, it's a really good little technique that gives the fish a completely new presentation. Oh, I just missed another one. And uh, just something that they they haven't seen before. It gives it, it's just such a natural presentation. That's all I can say. You're going to have to try it for yourself. And uh, go get yourself some. I feel like I'm going to have to be chasing largemouth in this tournament, but that's okay at least right now maybe we'll find something more just seems like i'm not catching the quality that i want i'd rather be fishing for bigger fish but i know there's a few in here i just don't know where they are anyways thanks for watching guys uh stay tuned we'll have a new tip video coming out tomorrow core tackle hover rig core tackle.com i'll put the link in the video description Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned.